Today is an extra special episode because I am going to be talking about the movie that just came out this weekend called Thor Love and Thunder. Alright everyone, welcome to Brandon at Random Reviews. I am your host, Brandon Griffiths. Thank you for joining me as always. I do appreciate it. Uh, You know, like I said, today is an extra super special episode because I don't talk about brand new movies all the time and I'll be honest with you, it kind of goes against the randomness of the whole Brandon at Random thing to continuously talk about new movies, which is something actually I avoid. So, you know, this is a special treat for you, the listener. So, before I dive right into the movie itself, I kind of want to talk... Now, I've talked about this... I'm actually several episodes ahead on this podcast. I... I've recorded like seven episodes already that have not yet been released. And I I want to, I want to talk about something and I've already kind of dabbled in it a little bit, but I'm going to talk about something a little different. So when I go to the movie theater, now not everybody that listens to this podcast probably knows, but I actually only have one eye. So my right eye is my good eye, quote unquote, and my left eye is my prosthetic eye. I don't I don't actually have an eye there anymore. It's just a little glass eye facade thing. So when I go to the movie theaters and I nowadays, you know, with COVID and everything, they make you pick your seats for every showing pretty much, or at least that's been my experience. I can't I can't speak for everyone. But uh when I go, I like to sit, if I'm facing the screen, I like to sit a little bit to the left, you know, like, just because the way I see it, everything is on my right side that I'm going to be seeing that way, and, and then it's more advantageous for my right eye to take it all in, if you will. So, you know, I did just that, you know, actually this time I went to the movie theaters, and I actually bought a pop, you know, I bought a... Pepsi Zero Sugar, and I wish they wouldn't have changed the names of all of these Zero Sugar beverages to Zero Sugar, because I, I don't think it it rolls off the tongue quite as well as just Zero, but whatever. Uh, when I went to the movie today, I'll, I'll kind of give you the basic experience. If you haven't been into a movie theater in a long time, this is kind of what to expect, or if you don't go very often, I can tell you that You know, I go to the movies pretty often, not quite as often as some, but I I do like to go. So there are always trailers before, before the movies, you know, I mean, so like, for instance, today I went to the 11 a.m. showing of Thor Love and Thunder, and when I see that it says 11 a.m., I bank on not starting until at least 11.20 with the actual movie that I'm going to see. That's that's how much bullshit there is before every movie. So, I mean, it's, it's nice to know that going in because if you're not used to the movie theater and you go in, you know, it's like, if you're thinking to yourself, I don't give a shit what movies are coming out. I don't want to sit through all these previews. You could just go... You know, and and show up later. You know what I mean. Or or if you're if you happen to be there in the middle of the day, you might be able to pick an earlier time and just go into that theater as is and not worry about it. The trailers before Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, there was I should start off by saying that there is like a little little uh, pre-show thing that they do, like a beh- like I don't even know if I call it behind the scenes, but it's basically like Uber Hadi Maria Menounos just kind of talks with different actors and actresses and you see a little bits and pieces of movies that have come out recently or about to come out or whatever. And so, you know, Maria, she's, she's super attractive. I mean, I don't, I don't know much about what her personality really is. I mean, most of, most of what I've seen of her, it doesn't feel like it's, it's authentic 
personality seeping through, but you know, whatever. I, I can't hold that against her. She's got, she, I mean, it's her job to be, you know, uh, appealing to as broad of an audience as possible. So today's previews started with, uh, they were talking about a movie and it wasn't really a trailer so much as like, a like, let's talk about this movie that's coming out kind of thing. It was, it's called Where the Crawdads Sing, and it had Reese Witherspoon in it, and it was, I don't know, I mean, the only reason I had ever heard of this, it's apparently it's a book, I think, but, like, Taylor Swift actually released a song for this called, I think, Carolina, maybe, or something like that, but it was playing during the, the little snippet of the movie, and I, I'll be honest with you, there's Probably not a great chance I'm going to go see where where the crawdads sing. Not not really too appealing to me. I didn't really think much of it. Uh, they, they talked about these Fathom Events movies, which actually I'm a big fan of. They are, um, they'll often do these, they'll call them Fathom Events. I don't really know if, if every movie theater does them or if it's just certain uh, theater chains that do them. But they are, a lot of times they will do special showings of like old movies of you know things that have anniversaries that year or something they'll do I think like this year they did Smokey and the Bandit and you know they've done in the past they've done the Batman movies they've done Die Hard that I've gone to It's a Wonderful Life you know just a bunch of different shit so there was the biggest thing that I have to say is because you know like you go to the movie theater Especially if you haven't been there recently, you you expect trailers, you know, you expect previews for other movies before the movie that you're going to see, and that's completely reasonable, but it, in today's climate of commercialism, we have to get, like, a dozen fucking ads, like, commercials that run before the movie, or before the, tr- the trailers even come on. I guess I, I, there was one that I didn't catch exactly what it was for. And I've seen it multiple times. And it's this this commercial where Kermit the Frog is singing. And I don't even know what it's for. I can't remember. And I saw the logo at the end. And the logo was unfamiliar. I had no fucking idea what the hell it was. But anyway, can't really. But so that's that's one commercial. And by the way... This all started at about 11 o'clock, okay? The, like, right when right when the advertised showtime is, which was 11 o'clock, that's when they start the commercials that precede the trailers, okay? There's a, a commercial for Amazon Prime Day, which, by the way, Amazon Prime Day, I have never had any success with Amazon Prime Day. It's like, they, they never have any good deals to me. Like, every time I see it, it's always just this... I'll be, like, looking for electronic stuff, and it's just this off-brand, shitty stuff that it's like, I don't fucking want to buy that. Like, that, yeah, that's a good deal if I if that were for something that was a name brand, but because it's not, I don't really give a shit, you know? I, I mean, I just put in my notes, what a joke for, for Amazon Prime Day, because it is. I mean, they're hyping... They always hype it up, like... Oh, get ready for Amazon Prime Day. And it's like, you know, it's just you're going to get a lot more web traffic that day if you're Amazon because you've hyped it up. But I I hope in reality their their sales are not great on that day. And I mean, and I don't mean like sales like stuff's on sale. I mean, sales like their revenue isn't as it isn't as good as they hope it would be. So after the Amazon Prime Day, we had uh, a commercial for Panera Bread. Which, by the way, one of the most overpriced non-sit-down restaurants that you can go to. You know, like, it's it's kind of fast food, but it also takes longer than that. And it's, I mean, I just, I don't get the appeal. Like, I, I guess I, I like their food. You know, when I go there and I get their food, I like it. But the problem is, is it is, like, double what I think I should have to pay for it, you know? So that kind of sucks. There was a commercial for extra gum, which I don't mind extra gum. I guess it's okay. I'm I'm all right with with the ad for extra gum. There was some goofy fucking commercial for Knox, like this phone security software that you can get. I don't know. I don't 
I was not really 100% on what it was that they were selling. You know, like, I guess I could go and download their app like they want me to and find out what it is, but I don't think that's going to fucking end well, you know? I mean, I doubt I'm going to go in for it. Uh, There was a commercial for, uh, after this Knox ad security, there was a commercial for Chipotle. Chipotle is solid, you know, I, I, I'm I actually, believe it or not, more of a Qdoba man myself, you know, a lot of people give me shit for that, but I really like Qdoba a lot better. I think their protein selection is a lot better, and it's a lot more impressive. Anyway, so then we move on, we've got a commercial for, uh, for Samsung slash Google, whatever you want to say, it was basically just for Samsung phones and like there's like a Backstreet Boys song in the commercial. So if you count the the where the crawdads sing, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine commercials f- followed by a closing out of the Nuvi pre-show featuring Maria Menunos. Then we got this one was weird to me, but there was a PSA about how to behave at a theater in the post-COVID world and how you need to really, you know, shut your fucking trap and stop talking in the middle of the fucking movies, which I found really amusing. I mean, it wasn't even so centric of, like, how to stop the the spread of the disease, you know? It was like, hey, if you're going to come back to movie theaters... Get your shit together and stop fucking talking, which I I can appreciate 100%. Oh, wait a minute. There was another ad, a commercial for Pepsi Zero Sugar, which was actually what I got and I I was drinking while the ad was on. So that felt pretty cool. There was a Mountain Dew commercial with Charlie Day. There was a Bubbly commercial, which is a, a carbonated canned beverage that... I don't, I'm pretty sure I've had it before and I didn't like it at all. And then of course there was a commercial for Nitro Pepsi, which I've had Nitro beer before at Founders in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but I'm kind of curious to see like what that tastes, because it's like a fizzier, like a creamier consistency uh, beverage. It, so at 11.07, that's when I got the start of the previews. Okay, the, the start of the trailers. That is a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 standard commercials in advance of the trailers that precede the movie. Okay. There was this Marvel pre-previews thing that came on too. So it was it was almost like a commercial, but not quite. It was basically like telling you, hey, look at all these great Marvel movies we're getting this year. And they talked about, you know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which was an immense disappointment. And then Thor, Love and Thunder, and then, you know, whatever else is coming out this year, I can't remember. But it was kind of dumb. I didn't I didn't really need it. The first trailer that came on was a trailer for the movie Nope, which is a Jordan Peele movie. He made the the movie like he was he was in that sketch comedy duo Key and Peel on Comedy Central. You've probably seen the the sketch where the the teacher keeps pronouncing all of the kids' names super wrong. So anyway, he made the movie the movie Get Out, which was immensely popular. It's a very psychological, like almost scary, like kind of like a suspense horror type movie. But I, I liked Get Out. But he's coming out with this movie called Nope, and it's like I'm I'm kinda on the fence. The first couple of previews I saw for it were a lot less revealing about what the movie was actually about. And apparently they're they're trying to capture footage of an alien, which I didn't realize, but I, I'm I'm kind of intrigued. I don't think I'll see it in theaters, but I'll see it, you know, when it comes out on video. Kinda like I did get out. There was a preview for the movie Bullet Train with Brad Pitt, which I heard about briefly earlier this year. It looks like it could be okay. Probably won't see it in theaters. Uh, There's a movie called 
And, and I made, oh, I made a special mention of the fact that now a lot of trailers specifically call out that their movie is releasing exclusively in movie theaters. Like, I give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't care if you, if you want to come out on HBO Max or Netflix or whatever and come out in theaters at the same time. I might come see you in theaters. It's all based on, you know, my level of interest in your movie and what kind of movie it is. Because if your movie is not like a you must see in, on a big screen kind of movie, then I don't really give a shit. But so anyway, they just they started making mention of that in a lot of previews, which I found kind of interesting. There's a movie called Beast with Idris Elba, who I'm a big fan of. This movie did not did not appeal to me very it's like it's like they're on an african safari or something and like this lion is attacking them and stuff it was just i don't know it didn't do much for me so there was a preview for black adam which is the new dc comics movie that's coming out that stars the rock that stars dwayne johnson excuse me and it was good to see uh, Pierce Brosnan is actually in that movie. And I had heard that, but I hadn't seen him yet. Or not that I remembered anyway. So it was kind of cool seeing him. Uh, there was some goofy computer animated feature called Strange World that Disney's coming out with. Don't really give a shit about that. But the king of all I don't give a shit about that is the final preview I saw, which was... Avatar, The Way of Water. Uh, I, I, I made a little note to myself as I was watching it because I didn't really care about what was happening in the preview. I said, the same people who thought the first one was the best thing ever will be the only ones who praise the new movies. It's 100% what I believe. It's I mean, I just, I, I was not impressed with the first one. I don't need to see a bunch of sequels to that movie. It can stand on its own as an okay movie Nothing to blow me away about, you know. I'll I'll give you some advanced warning on some things, you know. I, I don't want to I don't want to be too ridiculous about this, but I also don't want to like leave people in the dark. So MCU, if you if you catch me saying MCU, that means uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, so that's that's basically everything that you know up to this point, minus you know every Marvel superhero movie. Minus Deadpool, X-Men, and the Fantastic Four, and then like all of the Spider-Man movies before Tom Holland came along. You know, just just so you know that. MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, I've read a handful of Marvel comics or graphic novels or whatever you want to call them, trade paperbacks. Uh, they're few and far between for me. I'm I'm a much bigger fan of the DC comics, you know, like the movies. I could debate myself all day about who has the better movies or who has movies that I enjoy more. I've mostly read more DC comics because of Batman, you know, because I'm just a bigger Batman guy. So, you know, that's kind of how I feel about it. So, I mean, like, I don't know all of the backstories for all of the comics for all of these movies, you know? It's just, I'm not as into them as some people are, you know? I'll talk to some people who are, like, anticipating all of these things happening in these Marvel movies and these Marvel TV shows. And I, I look at them and I'm like, I, I, I don't even care, you know? I don't even, I'm not even gonna dive into that, you know? I'm just gonna watch the movies that I feel like seeing when they come out and, and move on with it. I, this is going to be a spoiler-free, for the most part, review. And what I mean by that is, when I say spoiler-free, I mean I won't directly reveal anything not revealed by the trailers or whatever in, in advance of these movies. But, like, if I... If I'm talking about somebody and I say, you know, like, let's say a character died in a previous movie and I make mention or I, I fail to make mention of them and it kind of gives away that they're dead. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I can only do so much. So just please forgive me for any of those, you know, those circumstantial spoilers that might come up. It's 
I'm doing the best that I can. It's just, it's tough sometimes, you know? This movie starts off, which if you've seen the, the trailers for this movie, you know that there's like, I think there's Sweet Child of Mine is in the, the Thor Love and Thunder trailer, or at least one of them. And so this movie starts off with this like, honestly, it was, dude, it was the shittiest electric guitar version of the Marvel Studios theme song that I've ever fucking heard. It's just, it was so terrible. You know, we'll crash into this movie. We've got Thor Love and Thunder, uh, release date, July 8, 2022, which I didn't realize that they were still saying that the Friday of the release weekend was the technical release date, even though you can go see the movie at any time on Thursday, basically. I don't know. I just found that kind of strange. So the director of this movie, I hope I'm fucking saying his name right, Taika YTT. I think that might be right, but I don't know for sure. I'll just not say his name any more than I have to. He directed Thor Ragnarok, which is the last Thor movie that came out before this one. He made... A, a really awesome mockumentary style vampire movie called What We Do in the Shadows. And he also created the TV show that was inspired by it. So back to the other movies he's directed. The Hunt for the Wilder People, which is on or was on Netflix when I watched it. I think it's still on there. I think it's a Netflix movie. It's it's a fucking hysterical movie. It's It's such... I mean, I love that so many of the things that... Taika YTT has has been involved in like he's I think he's New Zealander or New Z New Zealandian he's a New Zealander so he's so he's made all these movies and there are New Zealanders in these movies and TV shows and there's something about the New Zealand accent that is just hilarious like I just associate it and it's mostly because of him I associate it with these kinds of, you know, funny things, right? I would definitely suggest checking out What We Do in the Shadows. I think the movie's better, personally. I'm not as big of a fan of the show. Um, Hunt for the Wilder People, definitely a great movie. If you've got Netflix and you feel like watching something with a little bit of humor to it, check out Hunt for the Wilder People. He's also made... Eagle versus Shark, and then one called Boy, and one called Jojo Rabbit. Now, Jojo Rabbit, I turned that movie on and started watching it, and it was basically, I, it's like this kid has an imaginary friend, and that imaginary friend is Adolf Hitler. So, yeah, it's... I didn't make it very far into it. I mean, I can I can have an open mind about stuff, but like I just really I was like I'm not sure when the hell I'm going to be in the mood to watch a movie that's centered around Adolf Hitler as someone's imaginary friend, but the day is not today for that. So, um he also he wrote Taika Waititi, which I really hope I'm saying it right. Uh I, he wrote the show Flight of the Concords, and there, there's an episode that I, I insist that you watch of Flight of the Concords that's called uh, Drive By, and it's got uh, it guest stars Aziz Ansari, and it's got Brett McKenzie and Jemaine Clement, and they're they are the flight, you know, their Flight of the Concords. They're that's their band name, and so. This movie is just all of this awkward, weird humor, and it's just really fucking funny. It's just, I, I mean, I recommend checking out the whole first season, and I'm kind of so-so on the second season, but it's all right. I wasn't going to, like, I, I always have to gauge my level of fascination with the backstory for, like, if I'm going to talk about a producer when I talk about a movie, or if I'm going to talk about the composer of the score. Well, this movie... The producer, I mean, it's fucking Marvel Studios, it's Disney, it's, you know, Kevin Feige or whatever his name is, and, you know, that's fine. But the composer of this movie that made the score 
is named Michael Giacchino. Giacchino? I think that's what it is. Giacchino. He's made The Incredibles, Mission Impossible 3, Ratatouille, Cloverfield, the new Star Trek movie with Chris Pine, uh, 50-50 with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Seth Rogen, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, The Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and The War for the Planet of the Apes, Jurassic World, the original Doctor Strange movie, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, the MCU Spider-Man trilogy, Coco, Jojo Rabbit, and The Batman. So, like, just think about how much shit that is. That's a lot of shit to make the score for. I mean, you gotta be pretty fucking good at what you're doing. Especially The Batman. It was the most simplistic score, but it was... It fucking, you know, wailed. It was just fucking awesome. Obviously, you know, it's... If you know anything about these Marvel movies, which if you don't, you can still feel free to listen, but it's going to be a little harder to make sense of what I'm talking about. But the lead role in this movie is Chris Hemsworth, and he plays Thor. Um, He's been in all of these Marvel movies as Thor, several movies. Uh, He was in Men in Black International, which I never saw, but I I don't even know how it did, but... He, he's also in it with uh, one of his co-stars in this movie, Tessa Thompson, I think. Unless I'm being racist and it's a completely different person. Shit. Anyway, uh, he was in that god-awful new Ghostbusters movie reboot with Melissa McCarthy that is just fucking horrendous. I, I, couldn't, even, I couldn't even watch it. Like, I couldn't even sit all the way through it. It was so fucking stupid. Um, he was in Snow White and the Huntsman and, and some new Huntsman movie. He was in a racing movie called Rush, which I remember being pretty fucking solid. He was in Cabin in the Woods, which was a a very different take on the modern horror movie, which I didn't really care for it. I didn't hate it, but it was like I, I couldn't get into it. Um, he was actually in the first new Star Trek movie, uh, he played uh, James Kirk's dad, and so that's something. I mean, he was in the movie for like two minutes, but... So, a movie of his that I've never seen that I know of is called Red Dawn. Um, it's a remake of the movie from the 1980s with Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen and blah, blah, blah. The thing about that one is it was shot in Grand Ledge, Michigan, which is my hometown, and... It's, I've, I've heard nothing good about it, and I just, I can't remember, I think somebody, somebody I work with was telling me about that movie, and like, what they tried to do, as far as like, who was going to be the bad guy in it and stuff, and it just, it fell flat for everybody. I, I made a note that said, I don't think I need to see any more Chris Hemsworth movies, so, you know, there's that. Next up is Natalie Portman, who is, as I noted, hot. She plays Jane Foster. She was in Leon the Professional, which she was very young in. Um, She was in Heat with Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Val Kilmer. Uh, I need to revisit Heat. I I really need to watch that one. Um, She was in all three Star Wars prequel movies. So that whole prequel trilogy, she was in each of them. And there are actually not many other actors or actresses who can say that other than like Ewan McGregor and Ian McDermott or whatever. Um, V for Vendetta. Fucking love V for Vendetta. If you haven't seen V for Vendetta, you need to fucking watch that shit like today. Uh, she was in Black Swan, which was, I mean, it, it wasn't really that great to me. I mean, there were there were scenes of a romantic nature between her and Mila Kunis, which I really enjoy that portion, of course. But uh, she was also in the movie Brothers with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Tobey Maguire. And that was a fucking super serious movie. Like, wow. Um, a couple of movies that I need to check out. Annihilation. I can't remember anything about what that is. And then she was in, she starred in the movie Jackie, which is about Jackie Kennedy. And 
I mean, I've heard good things, but I just never, I mean, I guess it's not really super appealing to me, but, you know, whatever. Uh, next up is Christian Bale. He plays the villain in this movie, Gore. Um, obviously, you know him as Batman, Bruce Wayne from the Dark Knight trilogy, previously covered on this podcast. Uh, he was in a movie called Ford v. Ferrari, which was pretty decent. It wasn't spectacular. He was in The Big Short, which is another movie I need you to go check out right fucking now and not hesitate even a little bit. He was in The Fighter. He was solid. He was more supporting in that movie. And that, that had Mark Wahlberg and, you know, it, it was pretty good. I, I've got, I think I've got it. I need to revisit it. There's a lot of revisits that I have on my list. He was in a great movie called The Prestige, which is another one that I have to insist you stop listening to this podcast and go ahead and just watch The Prestige. I don't care if you have to buy it. Just fucking watch it. By the way, if you're going to stop listening to the podcast, what you want to do is you want to make a note of how far into the episode you are and then just take the volume and, and reduce it down to nothing. And keep it playing on your phone. And then just, you know, give me the the st- the, the listening data, you know, g- boost my, uh, my, my listening statistics, right? So yeah, just go ahead and keep, keep listening to that. So he was also in a movie called The Machinist, which he lost a shit, like a... St- a terrifying amount of weight for like he looks sickly in that movie but he did an amazing job and that movie is fucking solid i really like it it's almost like a modern alfred hitchcock movie which is definitely appealing to me so just know that that's where i'm coming from and then the other movie that he was in that i i never got around to seeing was called vice with uh you know it's like the dick cheney story or whatever you know and he plays dick cheney and he like I think he not only put on weight, but he like also obviously was super made up for it. Uh, another guy that is in this movie is Russell Crowe. I don't really want to give away who Russell Crowe is, but he's in this movie. Uh, he's, I mean, you know, obviously Russell Crowe. Glad, I mean, movies that come to mind: Gladiator, L.A. Confidential, A Beautiful Mind. Cinderella Man, you know, I mean, he, he's in a bunch of good movies. Apparently he's, I, I always know from like South Park that he's had a problem with like getting into fights and stuff in the past, but you know, I, I don't, I don't hold it against him. So the whole group of actors from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies are in this movie, which is cool. I mean, you get Chris Pratt, you know, I mean... Except for, I think one was missing now that I mention it, because I don't remember seeing this individual, and I guess it makes sense. But Tessa Thompson, also noted as hot, she plays the character of King Valkyrie. I haven't really seen her in much else. I mean, apparently I think she was in that Men in Black International movie, but whatever. Kat Dennings is in this movie for two minutes and Kat Dennings it's like she's good looking but her personality in everything she's in it's like I don't I don't want anything to do with her you know what I mean like I I just I I keep me the fuck away from her you know what I mean in this movie we get the birth of the villain first you know we we have to know who we're up against and So Thor has been out on his own. He's been, you know, doing this, doing that, you know, just kind of distancing himself from, you know, the the pain he's had in his life and stuff. I mean, there, I gotta say, there are a lot of, I I mean, it's, it's a high dollar, high budget movie. It's very well shot, obviously. I don't, I don't feel the need to, to point out like, oh yeah, this $250 million movie has good cinematography. Like, if it didn't have good cinematography, that would be worth noting. But since it does, it's just expected, and that's how it is. The The very high-level explanation of this movie is Jane Foster comes back into Thor's life. You know, I like I don't, like I said, I don't want to spoil a whole bunch of this movie, but I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit, like, you know, Thor 
is still, you know, he's he's keeping everybody at arm's length and he's just not talking to, you know, anybody on a romantic level. It's just but there are a lot of there are a lot of cool fight scenes and stuff and there there are a lot of great effects and stuff like that, but you know, it's a it's a very well well done movie. You know, the CGI is all top notch, you know. It has a good story to it. Like it's it's got a, a well paced plot and it's it it comes through very well, you know, it doesn't it doesn't leave you feeling like it's stupid or, you know, anything like that. Uh but it I mean it's it's really good and, and I think Christian Bale, honestly, that guy I he's a great actor, there's no question in my mind. Him as a villain in this movie was, I was fucking blown away by how good he did because he, he legitimately, I mean, for me, he was easily a top five Marvel villain because, I mean, and that's speaking more probably to the Marvel villain state than anything, but it's like, he was fucking awesome in this movie and I really would love to have seen more of him, you know? So... You know, you, you get some, you get some, you know, the scenes with Guardians of the Galaxy, they're cool. Um, the, the scenes where, where Thor is fighting or he, he's deducing, you know, what's going on and trying to figure things out there. It's always, it's all pretty awesome. I mean, as I mentioned, Taika Waititi returned. God, I, I really want that to be right. Uh, Taika Waititi returns after, you know, has, he has, you know, I mean, the last movie, I didn't care for Thor Ragnarok, you know, I, I wasn't a big fan of it, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute when I explain, but, like, he returned after the success of Thor Ragnarok, uh, Thor 1 was just, it was okay, it was basically just a could uh, it was basically just a cookie cutter, introductory movie for Thor, you know, just an origin story, which is fine. Thor 2 is pretty universally panned by most people. I mean, not a lot of people liked Thor The Dark World. So apparently Jane's, uh, Natalie Portman's character was going to get this same treatment that she gets in this movie in the What If series of, uh, you know, the Marvel What If stories. So they they basically nixed that happening in those um, in those episodes because they were like, hey, we're fucking doing this for this new Thor movie, so don't do that. I mean, I guess I'll I'll break down essentially what how I feel about how I how I ultimately felt about this movie. And this movie was it had the same problem as Thor Ragnarok, probably to a lesser extent, but. My biggest issue with Thor Love and Thunder is that it was too fucking jokey. It was, it's just, you know, like a lot of action movies, especially like you'll see buddy cop comedy type, you know, they'll, they'll make jokes. There'll be funny moments, but it's like, it's not, it's not taking over the entire fucking movie. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not like they're making a silly comment every fucking chance they get to try and take the edge off. It's like, no, I want a little bit of edge. You know what I mean? I want this movie. I realize it's a comic book movie and it's, you know, it's got a a Norse god in it and like it's it's not like it's meant to be taken super seriously, but if you know anything about anything, cuz honestly, if you're one of those people that tells me you know, when I when I complain about the seriousness level of a comic book movie and you swoop in and say, it's a fucking comic book movie, what do you, you know, it's not supposed to be that serious. The problem is, is in any other iteration of these characters, like Thor, if you know anything about his character, he is not a, a lighthearted, you know, jokey kind of guy. You know, he, he is... He is, you know, he might laugh at something heartily on a very rare occasion, but like these movies would make you believe that he's barely ever serious. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like the seriousness is the exception to the norm, and it's like 
fuck off. Like that's, I want it to be, I want him to be serious and the people around him to be funny because they're, you know, they're not on his level of taking shit seriously enough, you know? So I, I, I just, I, I noticed this and it was like at every, like every other moment in this movie has this lighthearted comic relief bullshit in it. And it was the same way with Thor Ragnarok. And it's like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't, I don't find it funny. Like, I, I, the, the worst part is, is the comedy is not funny. Like, I heard people laughing in the theater and I'm like, what the fuck are you laughing at? Like, you, you're just laughing because you know you're supposed to laugh. And I know, I know I'm getting too fired up about this, but this is legitimately how I feel about it. I just, I can't fucking stand the fact that it's so easy for now that they've got like a big following for Marvel movies, you know, they, they do this with these movies a lot where it's like, I mean, like I'll give it, I'll give credit to Black Panther. Like I didn't love Black Panther, but Black Panther was also not like, you know, oh man, let's make a joke every two minutes, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's that. I mean, like Spider-Man, Spider-Man is a guy who is talking while he's fighting his villains, making jokes you know, mocking them, whatever. But it's like Thor is so not that guy. I mean, it, there's a there's a video game I've loved for a very long time called Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And you pick four Marvel characters, and this was back when they had the rights to all of them. And Thor would always say, like, I feel as mighty as Odin. You know, like he would say shit like that. And it was like, yeah, I mean, like, he's that kind of guy, you know, he, he's talking like a god, you know what I mean? So I, I don't care for the jokiness, I cannot stress that enough, I fucking get so tired of it, and it's like, the whole time I was watching this movie, I was thinking, man, I actually would have fucking loved this movie if not for the jokiness, you know what I mean? And that's the hardest part. So, uh... I think that it's, it, this has been a trend with the Marvel movies. I think ever since the last, um, the, you know, it, Avengers Infinity War came and went, and even a little bit before that movie, uh, they, the movies have just not been as good, in my opinion. They haven't been as, as enjoyable. I mean, you, you start with Iron Man, which is like one of the best superhero movies ever made. Like, especially it's, it's an origin and it doesn't have a major villain in it, you know? Like, it's it's got a villain, but it doesn't have, like, a standout comic book villain, you know? And it's just, it's too bad that, that it's, it's natural, you know what I mean? After a while, all of these are going to go to shit, you know? And But it, it's just, it's nice to dream because there's so much money going into these fucking movies. It's just ridiculous. I said every moment is layered heavily in lightheartedness, which, yeah, that's 100. And Thor can't act like Thor for any period of time anymore, and it's like, fuck off. I I really, like, there's, there's aspects of Jane's storyline, you know, Natalie Portman's character in this movie that I really appreciated. I really liked that they brought that into a, a mainstream superhero movie stage you know so kudos to them for that i think that that's really nice so i gotta say i gotta reiterate this christian bale was a spectacular villain he did a really good job and luckily he was never laughing at the camera what which he shouldn't have been you know what i mean so the runtime of this movie no complaints here it's it was two hours long it was as long as it needed to be you know a lot of these superhero movies you know like the batman was like three hours long and it's just holy shit you know like I can't fucking do this you know what I mean I can't sit through this movie for that fucking long and you know it's it doesn't need to be that long frequently you know as I mentioned the budget for this movie was 250 million dollars I can't really get into worldwide gross yet because there's not really much for reliable numbers out there um, you know, it's opening weekend. I'm assuming it'll do well. 
it's it's sitting at a 7.2 on IMDb, which is it's it's a, it's in solid movie territory. It's like low solid movies. Sixes are hit and miss, but like sevens are usually pretty decent. But there there are always some stragglers that are not so good. So currently on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, the critic score sits at sixty eight percent. The audience score sits at eighty four percent, which is About what I would have expected. I might have expected a little lower from the critics, but what can you do? My personal rating of this movie is, it's honestly, it's 2.5 out of 5 stars. And that, that sounds a lot worse than I feel like it necessarily had to be. Like, I think this movie, if, if not for all the jokiness and the tone and everything, I think if it... If it wouldn't have had all of that, it would have been 4.5 out of 5, maybe. But because of the because of the inherent problems that were present in the previous movie that I didn't like, and the fact that they all came back because you had a lot of the same people making the movie, uh, you know, it's just... It's too bad, honestly. All right, so that was Thor... Love and Thunder. You know, I, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm sorry that this couldn't be a more positive review. I've I've had very few negative reviews to give lately, so I, I think I, I I'm hoping you'll give me a pass on this one. I just wanted to be honest with my my feelings about the movie. If you liked Thor Ragnarok a lot, then I would say you'd probably love this movie. You know, you'd probably think this was a fucking great movie. As I said, appreciate you listening, you know, tuning in, all that fun stuff. I, I, I definitely 100% appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, obviously, as always, please let me know if you think of any movies that you would like for me to cover on this podcast, preferably ones you don't think I've seen or even better ones that you think I might feel negatively about because, you know, sometimes I can get really fired up about the negative shit and, you know, it makes for some good podcasting. So there we are. Oh, hello, everyone. I wanted to take this time to talk about a little something called mid credit scenes and they're, they're a big problem with Marvel movies. I've, I've been over them for a very long time. What they'll do is, you know, the credits will roll and you'll get like, you know, a lot of movies you'll get credits at the beginning of the movie. Well, Marvel movies don't do that. They just, they have those credits because I think the Screen Actors Guild requires that there be credits twice in the movie, and so they will they will inc- include like these flashier, cooler to look at credits right after the movie's over, and then they'll do a little mid credit scene where they talk about something, and it's like every time I've sat and waited for them, I feel like I've been let down. Like they used to do them, and they were pretty cool, but it was like you know they would they would tease future movies when they had like a really grand plan laid out and they would just do a really spectacular job, but like it just doesn't happen as much anymore. So it's like, I just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of over the, the mid credit scenes. Brandon at Random Reviews is performed, written, directed, produced, and edited by Brandon Griffiths. Background audio is credited to Clankfield from freesound.org. Please look for the link in the episode description. Theme music is performed by Augusto Diniz from Fiverr. Oh, hello everyone. Again. Again, again. Uh... I also want to talk about those pesky post-credit scenes that are frequently like 12 minutes after the fucking movie gets over. And it's like, 
if you can't fucking get it into the actual movie, then don't put it in there at all. Don't even fucking throw the little bullshit consolation prize at the end of it. If just make it the end of the movie. You know what I mean? Make it make it happen before the credits and be done with it. You know what I mean? But they, they're obsessed with it. Now that they've done it so many times, Marvel has to fucking have a post credit scene and a mid credit scene every fucking time. And it's like, fuck off. I don't give a shit about your fucking, your post mid credit scene, whatever. It's just fucking stop. All right. Thanks, everyone. I just had to get that off my chest. Have a good day.